performing Kona Vita, Eamon Prune's Lifetime of Exchange. <laughs> On May 1st, 1952, over two million people gathered around the balcony of La Casa Rosada to watch Eva Perón speak. It would be her last public speaking appearance before her death 86 days later. For the following month, the nation was in mourning. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. God has made everything suitable for its time. We are gathered here today to honor the life and death of Maria Eva Duarte de Perón. At this time, I would like to invite up the president of Argentina and husband of Evita, Juan Domingo Perón, to speak. I prepared a small speech for today. On October 21st, 1945, I made the greatest decision of my life to marry my dear Ava. Why did she have to pass away so soon, only 33 years old? Even before I married Ava, I knew she was brilliant and that she was one of the most amazing women in the world. It was not until a couple years ago that I realized how truly incredible she was. At every speech I made before and during my presidency, she was standing right here supporting me. At every speech, right by my side. There's not one thing. I first saw the great things Ava could do a couple years ago when I was put into prison at Martin Garcia Island after I resigned from the position of vice president. On October 17th, Avita organized the mass demonstration that most of you participated in to get me out of prison. Gathered in the center of Buenos Aires were all of you protesting along with Avita to get me out of prison. For hours you stood there protesting and finally, the government gave in and I was released. When I arrived at this balcony later that day after being released, I was shocked. Maybe hundreds, thousands of people all gathered around the balcony, chanting and waiting to see me. And even better, all because of my Avita. As time went on, Avita established the Partido Peronista Femenino, which was a group of women who supported the rights of women in Argentina and supported me as well. This group of women, along with Avita, met time after time and tried to create some laws that would help with inequality. When Ava started this group, I had no idea how great the exchange would be between the group and me. Um, the, the next election last year, there were 2,441,550 women who all voted for me, all because of Avita. Now, while we're talking about women, I'd also like to speak about how Ava contributed to the lives of women and how she improved their lives. When she came to Buenos Aires at the age of 15, she, she uh, made a terrible discovery. Women were not allowed to vote here. One thing that worked, one thing that women worked for in the Partido Peronista Femenino was to get women to be able to vote in Argentina and have a say in the government here. Around six years ago, when Avita and I proposed a law to Congress regarding women's voting rights, she went on a mission trip while we were waiting to hear back to Madrid. Uh, when she came back, I remember personally talking to her and telling me what an amazing experience it was just the things she learned, and I remember in one of her speeches, she said that this century would be known as the century of victorious feminism. A bit after she returned from her trip on September 23rd, 1947, the law was approved and women were allowed to vote in Argentina, and still are. It was fantastic. You should have seen the women's reactions when this law was passed. Um, after the law was passed, Avita and her group of women started funding Unidades Básicas, which were neighborhoods for women where women could go and live comfortably. Now, real quick, I would also like to speak about our relationship. She was the best wife a man could ever have. She was so sweet, talented, pretty, and just always cared for me. This is really tough for me. Besides our political and social exchanges, one thing she taught me was to never give up on your dreams. Avita dreamed of being a star here today we all can see what a star she has become. The things she has done made her who she is today and who she will forever be. My life will live forever in peace as the hero that she truly is. She changed the face of Argentina for the better and improved our country majorly. Now, before I go, I'd just like to tell everyone here Ava's last words to her sister, Elisa. 
Eva Seva, or Eva's leaving. Eva, I love you and miss you more than words could imagine. Hello, everyone. My name is Francisco Javier. For years, I stood around this balcony, surrounded by my fellow descamisados. Day after day, chanting, Cona Vita, Cona Vida. The things that Vita did for my family were inconceivable, besides personally delivering us food on Christmas Eve. The Vita was the founder of the Eva Peron Foundation, which helped my family immensely. When the foundation began in 1948, my family had nothing. We were living on the streets day and night. The foundation helped us get food, send our kids to school, and even live in a house. Well, we didn't get our own house, but we were sent to a hogar de transito, a temporary home. Without Avita, none of this would have happened. I once heard a rumor that each year, she would buy 400,000 pairs of shoes, 500,000 sewing machines, and 200,000 cooking pots just to give to people like me. A couple years back, my family and I had the privilege of going directly to Avita to ask for help. While we were waiting in line to see her, I remember hearing that she had once kissed a girl with syphilis and did not mind at all. Once we talked, uh, she gave us a check for a very large amount of money and other goods and sent us on our way. She was the sweetest woman and she was so brave. Now, apart from helping my family, she was extremely kind and generous uh, to our kids and all kids. Uh, because of Vida, my kids were able to go to school play in sports competitions, travel to places they would never have been able to travel before. Now, while Avita was helping everyone else, she was also straightening out her memories from the past. About a year ago, I remember running to the bookstore to buy her new book, La Razón de Mi Vida, The Reason for My Life. When I opened that book, I could not put it down. The information I read in that book was mind-blowing. I, I had no idea how much Ava's childhood influenced what she was doing today. When her father died and she was not allowed to ride in the hearse to his funeral was her first encounter with poverty. And from that moment on, moment on, Ava really saw what she had to do and she went for it. Over the course of her life, the many exchanges that we had and the things she did for the poor were so impressive and I don't think anyone else could have done what she did for us. Now, even though Ava originally came here to focus on being famous and become a star, she threw her dreams away of being famous and decided to help people like me instead. Like millions of Argentinians out here today, I am grateful to Avita for helping me rise out of poverty. So before I leave, I'd just like to say thank you. And one last time, con Evita. <laughs>